Okay, I'm here with Nathaniel. Nathaniel here. <laughs> Alright, we're going to give you a tour of the Gek Power Palette. And uh, I'll be trying to be brief and quick and dirty here. So we have the, the CPU right here. So the CPU is controlling all this thing. It's running as a state machine. We have a program that does that. It's, a, it's an Arduino board that we've created to do some MIT engineering uh, help and whatnot. And uh, there's temperature probes here, analog digital probes, a range of FETs here, a range of pressure sensors, um, uh, and servos and other switches here, and a USB port. There's other features like RS-232 and some digital card readers that can be programmed in there. We have the auger, grades, reset, switches, alarms. We have a run meter and how long we've been running it. We have 24.9 hours on this particular model right now. So that's how long we've logged. Continuous runtime. Uh, more than we've run it before the workshop a little bit. Inside is all our automation controls. Very, pretty much standardized stuff. Here we have a oxygen sensor that's hooked to the back of the muffler of the engine telling us our air fuel ratio and so we're our fuel fuel metric ratio essentially so, so that's on here that's on the back on the back sorry yeah so this here is the air intake the servo valve and uh, it basically is controlled by the CPU with this the PID loop phase control loop that measures the, the, the sensor, the oxy sensor on the back of the engine and adjusts the air quality so it mixes the gas quality in there. So that's how we get the gas quality to the engine. So this is air and this is the gas. And that's the air, this is the gas. The gas is, is going backwards through the system. The gas comes from the filter, which filters out any residual tars or other things that aren't burned or left in the gas, which does happen in the gas fire. And that's one of the biggest problems, as everybody knows. So this is a and that's of made out of wood chips up to here and then different grades of uh, foam filtering. The gas comes into the filter through the pipe down there and into the filter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to how the gas is produced. So we'll go from the beginning rather than the end. Okay. So here's the wood chips. We use wood chips and we try to dry them to at least 15 to 20 percent water content. Any more than that it starts to get sticky in there and it's doable but it's kind of hard on the startup. So we fill in here. It's a sealed drum. We drop the wood chips into here. They are augered into this heating area where we essentially have the auger here, which is augering the wood chips through. And this is double jacketed, which we are taking ga the gas that's being produced later down the stream and reheating the wood to get more water vapor out of it to dry the wood chips even further. So that's another scavenging of the heat. As the wood chips come in, they're censored through this uh, sensor here that's a, that's a flap sensor, basically. And it, the wood chips bind up in there and they drop through the gasifier. And this is another insulated jacket called the toddy. And it's a tower of thermal integration, is what we call it. And we're taking more heat back from the reaction. We're using the muffler heat to this part. So all the engine heat is going back into this. In that part, we're using all the gas heat as the gas comes through. So this is engine heat, that's gas heat. So the gas is being produced, comes out of the bottom of this reactor vessel, which is a tapered reactor with a bell, essentially. And it's a basically an ember design, downdraft gasifier. So the draft is going down, the pyrolysis zone, the combustion zone, the reduction zone, and then the gas is being passed over the hot coals and then back up through into the swirl separator to get rid of the fine, the fine part particles which are being caught essentially down in a bell jar down there. All the way at the bottom you see a bell jar all the way down there. This is a swirl filter just like any other dust filtering. It's, we're just getting the little fines out of it. 
and that's gonna those will propagate eventually a little bit to the this reactor and a little bit to the filter which it all gets out of there eventually but it's all so it's real clean when it really clean so we're trying to get rid of soot stages so the gas comes out of here and goes into this uh, nova flex here so this is this is where producer gas that started out as like 900 celsius has now dropped to about in temperature, and I can hold on here, it's like 104 or something like that. Three Fahrenheit, we can touch that. Yeah. So we've scavenged a lot of the heat out of it. So now it's cooling, 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 cooling. And we want it to get colder and colder so that the least are getting as much dew and water and stuff to drop out of that and into the filter medium. The process, that helps filter even more. Right? So we need some water maybe down here, that's why we have this bun here. So we can check the water levels, depending how wet the wood is. And then we're back to the beginning again, where it comes the gas comes through. This is producer gas coming in here. And drops into here, air fuel mixture coming down here. Now it's, the gas is condensing again, we're hitting more dew point levels. It's just cooling and cooling. And say if it was a cold day or night, it might be dense condensing over here or here first. So we have a little condensate collector. So we're collecting the condensation in this in this jar. And so it goes into here, and it goes into the, our engine. Our engine here has a Woodward um, throttle throttle valve, basically throttle assembly, right? So it's programmed. And we can program it. We can take data. We can change the settings. We can change the, what, it's, what it's doing. But it's hooked up to the timing of we have a program that we program onto it and it's hooked up in there and it's getting the RPM sensing and it's doing what the engine's doing. So the engine bogs down because of our 5 kilowatt load that we throw on there. It throttles up the engine and it's sitting in a, in a way that we like it to and it sucks more gas and it produces more gas. So it catches back, the, the gas car catches back up. So there's a little bit of inertia to the system but we have enough gas in there to deal with it. And then, <clears throat> then you've hooked this up to your computer and, and you can monitor this uh, remotely also? Yeah, we can monitor the Woodward or we can monitor it right here. We're monitoring, we're monitoring the, the, the data that's collected there from the USB port. So, going around the back, we have various insulation jackets. Various, here's the oxy sensor, right? There's temperature probes. Battery. Right now, the battery is hooked up to a charging circuit because we have a glitch in this this alternator, so it has a weird glitch in it. We don't know what it is. We haven't yet figured out. But too much work for the workshop. So, we're, uh, uh, so we're trying to preserve as much heat as we can, to get it into the back into the system. That's what bumps up the efficiency of the system. Get the nice clean jar gas, nice clean gas. Here we have two valves that we that we will further further automate. This is the valve that you use to open the valve for the gas to come in there. When we initially started up, we use this valve, to turn the gas off, and we have this fan situation here, which isn't ideal, but it, it works. And it's cheap is a cheap enough solution for us, believe it or not. Um, so these these fans are so that we can run our flare. So we're starting the to uh, find heat power now. So we're, we're getting the flares together, we're learning all about how the flares work and what's happening. And there really should just be two fans here, but this fan is doubled up so we get more inches of water and more pressure. Because we, we like this fan and it's cheap, basically, yeah. right? So it's cheap enough that we can use two of them. We can use two of them, right? So. Um, so when you initially start, you're flaring off the initial gas. Yeah. yeah. But, but yesterday you were uh, opening the top and putting in more fuel, fuel yeah. and it was kept Fine. running. Just keep running. Yeah. Yeah. So you have a little window of space that you can add fuel that'll keep running. Because it's really creating a vacuum. It's going to burn here. It's going to get the air here anyway, right? So it's, it's now drawing air through the top of that. But what's bad about drawing air into here is that it now becomes a combustible area, right? You're making mixtures of air and whatnot. So that 